Okay, so we're gonna repair a large hole in drywall. And um, if the hole is the size of a racquetball or smaller, you could use um, Hyde has a product called Wet and Set, which uh, works really well for those smaller size holes. But once they once they get to a certain size, you, you just have to cut out the affected area and repatch uh, a complete piece of drywall in its place. Um, so the first step that I like to do is just square this off and create uh, a nice uniform piece that can be replaced. So I will use my jab saw for that. And, you know, it doesn't have to be any particular uh, size. You just want to get into sound substrate, sound drywall, where it's not broken or damaged or whatever. So I'm just going to start here, put, go in with my jab saw, and it'll want to catch the insulation behind it. So the shallower you go, the better. And just bring it over to the edge of the damaged area. Voila. There we go. We've gotten rid of all the drywall that's broken. Papers well intact all the way around the perimeter. And now we're just going to need to create uh, some nailers to attach or patch to. Yeah, so so with this nice jab saw, you're able to, you could also use a utility knife with a razor to do this, but it's a little more difficult and requires many passes in the same spot. So I like using the jab saw, a nice, get a nice sharp one. Once they get old and dull, just get rid of it and get a new one. And then that way the paper, it cuts the paper nice and clean and it doesn't delaminate the paper from the gypsum inside. Okay, so we're gonna install our nailers so we have something to screw the patch to. I like to make it about four or five inches wider than the hole, so you have a couple inches on either side to screw to. And I'm using strapping here, but you could use anything, a piece of one by, two by four, whatever, a chunk of wood. So we're gonna put this nailer in and we're actually gonna place it so we're splitting the edge here so we have something to screw both sides to. So I'll just tuck it in here, get it about halfway, make sure I've got it relatively centered, and then we'll place a screw. Once again, just setting it deep enough so that it doesn't break the paper, but is recessed slightly so your taping knife doesn't hit it when you mud. I'll put one down here. Okay, now we'll put our second piece in. And this time I've attached a screw to the middle of it to help me hold it. Um, Probably this hole is big enough so that you can get by without this, but if it was a little narrower, you might not have enough room to get your hand in there to hold it. So this is a kind of little helpful technique to, uh, to keep it in place while you're, while you're trying to screw it. just cut our patch now and it doesn't have to be perfect um, you don't have to make it so small you're gonna fight to get it in there you want to leave yourself maybe even a quarter of an inch on either side so I'm gonna go like six and three quarters by five and a half all right so we're gonna cut a patch piece of drywall I have a scrap piece here that I always try to have scrap pieces of drywall on hand just for this purpose um, if you don't have one, you can actually go to your um, uh, building supply store and they usually have piles of culls, pieces that are damaged. 
and uh, they'll sell them to you cheap so you can get a whole sheet for half price or, or less. Um, and that's usually what I do, just for patching material. Um, so I'm gonna cut this one using a razor knife to the rough dimension that I need for my patch. And I've already measured it out six and three quarter. And you just need to score that paper on top and then it'll snap like that. And then if you just cut along the back of that, boom. I've got my six and three quarter. Now I'm just gonna cut that to the five and a half that I needed. And it doesn't have to be perfect or exact, just roughly. Just make a couple marks with your, with your knife and then connect the dots. And just one score through that paper is all it takes. All right, so we have our patch piece that we just cut. We're gonna screw that into this hole. And I have a rasp here in case I need to make a little adjustment. And it looks like it's hitting down here in this corner just a little bit. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of material off with the rasp and boom. Okay, so we're ready to tape our patch, and I'm going to use mesh tape. Um, I prefer it over paper, just because it eliminates the bubbling issues. And it has, it is self-adhesive, so you could apply it over the seams, and it'll stay in place without any mud. But I like to pre-fill these gaps and make sure we're getting a good amount of joint compound work into these voids and I just press it into those voids between the patch and the drywall so you know you're filling that gap up completely and basically creating a continuous sheet of drywall yes okay so we're going to place our tape centered on the joint and put your drywall knife against it Tear at an angle, it's on there nice. So we'll just go around the square, applying mesh tape all the way around in the same manner. And it is self-adhesive, so it will stick there fairly well. So now your, your tape is in place, we can go right over it with a quick set. I'm using 20 minute, you can use 90 if you want to give yourself a little more time. And just Press it through the mesh. It's about a 30 degree angle, I'd say, um, which drags the material in front of the blade and also forces it down into the mesh. So too sharp of an angle, you'll pull your, you'll pull your tape up. And too shallow of an angle, you'll leave too much material behind. This is just a first coat. You don't overdo it with your joint compound. You just want to embed the tape with the compound. Um, you don't want a whole lot of excess here because um, you're going to be putting another coat, thin coat, over the whole thing and feathering it out further on all the edges. So it's a nice smooth transition and there'll be minimal sanding to, to have a nice finished surface. Okay, so we have allowed the quick set to dry on this drywall patch for about 20 minutes or so. It's set up nicely. Uh, you can touch it. You don't leave any fingerprints, any marks. If there's any high ridges or balls of, of joint compound anywhere, you can just gently take your knife and pop them off. You don't want to dig in. You don't want to pull the tape up because you can still get under it and ruin that which you'd have to just cut it out. Um, but putting minimal amounts on over the tape is key to not having to sand or do much uh, drywall joint compound removal before the next coat. Okay, so we're gonna go over this patch with um, all-purpose joint compound, which um, sands nicely and actually um, paint adheres better to it than the quick set products so it's nice to just do your top coat with all purpose if you have the time to uh, allow it to dry you can use 90 minute 
uh, quick set, which I've done in the past, and you just want to make sure you, you, you prime it well um, before you go over it with finish paint. So I'm going to apply a fairly liberal coat of all-purpose with a six-inch knife over the whole area. And then I'm going to switch to a wider knife and just, this is an eight-inch knife. Um, slightly wider. I could use a 10 here, but it's, you know, the area isn't that large. And I'm just trying to use light pressure to get the ridges down and smooth out the whole thing. In this case, I, I'm putting more pressure on the right hand side of this blade than the left. So it's creating like a, a ramp of joint compound on that side. And same thing here, using more pressure on the left than the right to create a ramp on that side. Clean up the lines. And in this in this situation, I would say this is this is probably pretty good. It could, could go a little heavier on this corner here. You can see the uh, still slightly see the grid work of the mesh tape there. So, but um, I think it probably would be okay. But just to be better safe than sorry, we'll. Just put a little more on there. And some of that. There you go. So that should dry into where we can just lightly sand it and be ready for painting.